In 2009, the biggest selling album in the world was not by Beyonce or Lady Gaga. It wasn't by Kings of Leon or U2. It was by an unknown, unemployed, lonely woman from Scotland. But what happened to the woman behind the most incredible success story of our time? I get embarrassed. <laughs> what about your achievements? Yeah, I get embarrassed. I mean, nobody special. Over three months, I was given unprecedented access into the life of the world's most unlikely superstar. Well, look, can we stop that for a bit? I'm having a bad morning. <laughs> she went into a very, very bad place for a while. Did you feel guilty? I did for a while. I didn't know what the right decision was. I didn't know whether we did a good thing or a bad thing. I wanted to find out if the person that first appeared on our screens two years ago was still living the dream. Thank you all very much. Everything amazing has happened because of you. Did you say the dream was what you were expecting? Well, the dream is not a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Or if some people were simply not made for fame and fortune. People enjoy the negative side rather than looking for the positives, because there's a lot of positives to Susan. I've always got that insecurity that's all going to go away. Do you find yourself getting lonely, Susan? Yeah. You feel it sometimes at night. I was surprised to find one of the world's most successful recording artists still living in the same council house she grew up in. Here you come. Welcome to Dracula's castle. <laughs> Catch you doing the washing up? More or less, yeah. What was worse never done, you know? This is, the place is like a, a tip just now. You have to make, make apologies, you know? Would you say you're quite house proud, then? <laughs> I'm not bad. <laughs> make a bit of a mess like everybody else, you know? Obviously, in the last couple of years, you've made yourself quite a good fortune. <laughs> Some people might assume that you've gone off to live in a castle somewhere. It's just their imaginations, heaven's sake. <laughs> People have got good imaginations, haven't they? <laughs> if you want to keep yourself grounded, you just don't get ideas above your station. <laughs> Who wants to live in a castle anyway? It's drafty. <laughs> Susan lives on her own, but at one time shared the house with her parents, three sisters and four brothers. Ten people sharing one bathroom. That, 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 that used to be fighting in the morning, I can assure you. Especially when you were getting ready to go to your work. <laughs> you know, this used to be the girls' room in here. So it was, it was maybe three of us in the one bed. And I had all my stuffed, all my stuffed toys in the bed as well. Bruno, my big bear and everything. So it must have been, must have been something for the, the rest of them. <laughs> so three of you used to share one bed? Yeah, that's right. And that was the laddies' room in there. The boys' room? The boys' room, mm-hmm. How many boys shared this room? No, well, there was Jared, Joe, John and James. There was four of them. And this was the boss, my mum and dad. Sorry it's a bit of a mess just now because, you know, I've no, not a chance to clean it yet. It's lived in. <laughs> there you go. It's a wee bit better, isn't it? Okay, Dory, there you go. Who's that on the bed? Oh, it's Don Osmond. <laughs> Here you are, son. Have a good look at that. It's the nearest thing I'll ever get to you. And there you go. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, I'm never too old. I'm never too old, you know. I'm never too old. Never too old for what, Susan? I'm never too old. I can dream, but don't touch. <laughs> That's what keeps you alive, isn't it? <laughs> there you go. Susan has lived her whole life in a small town between Edinburgh and Glasgow in central Scotland.
Before she appeared on Britain's Got Talent, Susan was seen as a reclusive eccentric on the fringes of the community. But at this year's Town Gala Day, the people of Blackburn have made Susan their guest of honour. As a village, we would like to thank you for putting Blackburn on the map and encouraging both young and old that you should never give up on your dreams. Thank you. Well, thank you all very much. I feel chuffed. <laughs> and uh, I hope to continue to uh, do your proud. I'm very touched. Thank you. Well, they'll do the wiggle of what? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Susan, I have a super tattoo on my leg. <laughs> strange that someone would get a tattoo of your name on their leg. Whatever turns them on. <laughs> Whatever turns them on. So do you know most of the people you're seeing in waving? Most of them are new as well, most of them I do know, yeah, because I grew up with most of them. So there you are, extra special, eh? Although cherished now for helping to put Blackburn on the map, Susan used to be regularly picked on by the town's children. All the weird ones, like the young teenager ones, they used to egg her windies and all that and be really, really horrible and say horrible things to her, but they've all changed, they're all at door asking for autographs and stuff, eh? So I think they've all got a bit of respect for her now. Susan was starved of oxygen at birth and suffered brain damage. I wanted to know how this affected her childhood. There are still a lot of stories that you were bullied. I was at bullied school. at school, yeah. You were bullied at school? Because I had a slight disability and I was a bit slow. You know, it hasn't really scared me that much, you know. Twitch, twitch. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know has it twitched me that much? <laughs> you say you, you got bullied. Just how bad did the bullying get? It was all psychological stuff, you know. The kids don't know they've been, some kids don't know they've been cruel, some kids do, and they get a kick out of it, and they could make me scream and bawl, and that, that made some of them, whoa, whoa, let's make a scream and bawl, you know, because it was hyperactive. You, you say that it was mostly psychological, but it did actually get physical. It got physical as well, there was a lady at school who used to stub out cigarettes on me, stuff like that, you know. And just stub out cigarettes on you? Yeah, just, you know, and bash me about and stuff like that until one day I got fed up with her and gave her a good sound pacing. <laughs> you, you fought back? I, I could fight back when I needed to, you know. So, 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 so impression. I gave the impression I couldn't fight back, I, I could fight back when I needed to. What did you do when you fought back? Give him the Glasgow head. <laughs> did you really? She had nice long hair, this lassie. So I just grabbed the hair and just put her down. <laughs> How did you put her down? Easy. <laughs> the hair. And she didn't burn you with cigarettes after that? She didn't bother me after that, no. When I next met up with Susan, I got my first sense of just how much her world had changed. For most of her adult life, she was unemployed, surviving on benefits. Now, accompanied by her manager, Andy Stevens, she was having a meeting about her new album with one of the most influential people in showbiz. Hi, Mr. Carl, how you doing? Hello. Hello. Hi, Mr. Carl. Simon, how are you? <laughs> yeah, not so bad. How about not being a kiss? Oh, well, come on then. Can I get you a cuddle? Whatever you want. Yeah, beautiful. I've been waiting for this for ages. <laughs> how are you? Not so bad. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, you too. Are you behaving yourself? Off and on. That means no. <laughs> Oh. That would be really nice. Nice to see you. How are you? Okay. Yeah, okay. Is this okay? Come yeah, on. fine. Whatever you want. Thanks. Cheers. Where's good for you, sweetheart? Well, wherever. I said wherever you want. 
Okay, no problem. <laughs> I don't want to show you. I don't want to. Why are you being all shy with me? <laughs> because I'm a shy person. You don't believe that. I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> and Susan heard the tracks we heard in the meeting last week. I don't, I don't think so. That's the only stuff. You know when I said you a note last week and I said I like what I've heard? Mm -hmm. Have you heard those songs, those rough mixes? I have a bit, yeah. You have? Mm -hmm. which, are you happy? I could do better, but I'm happy in the... Really? Happy, yeah. I always try to do my best. No, I know. I think you sounded great on the record. Thank you. Someone Very smoky, very jazzy, isn't it? Kind of lounge music stuff, isn't it? Do you think it has the same impact as Crime Your Own? Yeah. Who's lost in the world? So we discussed on Unshaped Melody. It didn't quite feel raw enough. Oh. Every time I recorded the song, it was number one. Every time. And it feels... Cross my, I'll cross my fingers. So slow. It's really good. I'm excited about it. Are you enjoying it? I enjoy working for you. You don't work for me. Yes, I do. I work for you. No, you don't. Oh, excuse me. You're the boss. <laughs> this, that's, that's the deal. I thought you were. No, you're the boss now. You didn't read your contract. Come on, boss. Oh, don't be silly. That's true. Don't be silly. Yeah. Nice to see you, sweetheart. You're lovely. Good to see you, sweetheart. After appearing on Britain's Got Talent, Susan struggled to cope with the instant fame. I was curious if Simon ever had any doubt about giving her a record deal. It's quite well documented that she suffered from brain damage as a, as a child and it has affected her for the rest of her life. Has that been a factor uh, as an artist that you guys look after? Well, you know, it's, it's what I said before, it's a responsibility. Um, you have that with any artist you work with. Um, uh, I mean, uh, always what we've tried to do on our shows is, is to try and have a sort of an openness and, and the idea that we couldn't work with her because of what happened in her past and that she didn't have her own viewpoint or she didn't have the right to change her life for the better, to me, was actually disgusting. I told her that this is, you know, going to be quite stressful at times because that's what happens when you make records. But it's what she wanted to do. I got a lot of, lot of stick uh, after the show um, when um, uh, she, you know, found it very, very difficult to deal with the fact she didn't win and went into a very, very bad place for a while. And at the time, um, you know, there were a lot of people who were very critical about the show. And did you feel guilty? I did for a while. I didn't know what the right decision was. I didn't know whether we did a good thing or a bad thing. And I spent a lot of time thinking about what was the right thing, wrong thing. And I actually just went with my gut instinct, which was, I'm not going to patronise this person. So uh, I, I, I do believe we've made the right decision. You know, when she's happy, it makes me happy. She has her down days, uh, but I think she would have had her down days anyway. I wanted to find out how Susan was coping with her new life and whether fame had actually made her happy. She'll come home, she closes the door. There's nobody there to welcome her. Do you find yourself getting lonely, Susan? You feel it sometimes at night. 